today, I still be entering this classroom. It will be shared with a handout. Delineating the part two of our lecture. The lecture is on the phenomenology of the internal consciousness of nail biting. So firstly, let's have a review about what we have learned from the last session. The last session related to the part one of which so as to the part one we've been discussing the importance of the temporal consciousness you know, as to the all conscious act. So in another word, the temporality become a key recognition as we are trying to investigate all these kinds of conscious acts. So to this session, part two, or we can see the title of which, the temporal flux of nail biting. So what are you saying about temporal flux? What is the temporal flux? And how it relate to the nail biting? might be the key questions of our investigation. So we have to pay attention today about key concerns. Our understanding of the simultaneity. So if we still remember what is simultaneity? Simultaneity, as we understand, different temporal objects now involve with different intentionality, therefore, because of the, the difference The difference of that moment, so we're recognizing that moment is you know, containing rather two temporal positions, other than one temporal position, and both temporal positions are shared, and both temporal positions are belonged to each intentionality it should belong to. But today, as we proceed our understanding of simultaneity, we are we are considering uh, elements of rather that singular now might only contain a singular temporal position. We define for the consideration on how a temporary event to be constructed. Because we can no longer distinguish different intention, intentional events through different temporal positions. As we mentioned, each temporal position might be unique. Therefore, we are able to distinguish different temporal events. In that case, as they share a singular temporal position, we are, we are now 
such a uh, struggle of distinct, distinction. But what has to ultimately mention is the neglection or the mathematic encountering of the temporal position. Well, we could recognize the event of nail bite, another event exemplified by the event of by the event of theoretical reading as a singular one because the sheer singular temporality this is singular temporal position and therefore able to be formed as a single event unified horizontally in that way other than because of the juxtaposition of different temporal positions. So it's actually simplified. You know, simplified today as we are, we only need to distinguish them. You know, uh, it's our choice to distinguish them or not. As they share a singular temporal position, it might not be necessary. Because they're unified. They're horizontally unified by that same temporal position, other than multiple. So, as the first part, I saw a correction. We have to bear in mind about this change. Because it might have further impact. As your Analyzation. So the next thing I have singled out is the idea of the subjective time in the structure of so called class. It's actually the definition that is bad. And it's quite a it's quite an idea which contains hardship to understand with. So what is flat? Literally it is this thing by the change. The change the the value of certain elements. And this flux formed because of the, the co the, the collaboration between you know the collection between the horizontal temporality and the, the vertical temporality we have mentioned. Therefore the idea of the simultaneity and also the linear idea of the linear idea of past, present and future. So therefore it enrich a single temporal position. At that moment it comes from a certain modification. And this modification derived from the primal impression of certain elements become all together at once to be modified so what is what is flux involved it involves four levels. Four levels within within this flux. And as to the idea of nail biting. So the first level is the primal impression. 
of the object, which is the live sensation, the perception. You know, at that moment, engendered. And likewise, the past, the, the memory, you know, associated. You know, the memory of the object transcendentally appeared. You know, it, it, you know as if previously expired. We might come back to this point later because it's quite uh, important to reiterate how memory works as to this impression. And certainly the act of retention of the primal impression of just having been. So the retentional the intentionality of the of the primary impressions of certain temporal objects. And likewise, the constant awareness, not really awareness, but our consciousness, of the constant the transformation and modification process of the leave primal impressions into memory. So like from the lived perception and impression transform toward that one expired. And all this consciousness has been aligned with the mirror, the, the only appearance of the initial object, formed the idea of totality and flux. So, so therefore, at that moment, at that moment, there are four layers of play within. And therefore, if we enlarge with the scale of analyzation, if we consider that whole temporal position, as a whole, now it has its own expandness. It has its own modification as well. It's all act of, the act of the retention of the whole series of modification of the primary impression of the having been. The constant transformation and modification process of the whole construction of the flux of the primal impression. Therefore, it forms the diagram here. So that the four layers of modification is just a, a part of the flux. Moving back, sinking back all together. You know, if you count it as single enough. And this single enough you could be in large, in bigger scale, you know, infinitely. You know, I could say like maybe two units, even more unit of the modification process of the primal impressions. And each unit which you know, contains four layers of change might you know, also embody into this process and able to be analyzed as such. Therefore, therefore, I have to think about, you know, we have to be aware of that enrichment from that non-knowledge and temporality. We can no longer, you know, just take the consciousness of the nail biting, yeah, uh, you know, simply this uh, kind of simplistic approach because of this enrichment of that temporal moment of that now. So you actually sublimate. Our initial consideration of the 
consciousness of the nail bite. Is somebody made that? As are some made. You know, mass media be English all the time. To form certain equality involved. So then I have a wheel of this logic. It becomes political. Because we are considering the elements of conscious rights and equality. It becomes democratic. Because of the complexity involved in your singular consciousness, singular temporal position formed. So it's saying that each layer, not each layer, but each conscious act, you know, because of the constant flux of the consciousness rendered through the idea of the temporality. That image you know, of our consciousness is actually aligned. Aligned like that. Aligned. So we're considering the logic of equal conscious mind. Which is our next people told the discussion. The model could be borrowed from Boris Groys article. It is article on the logical the logic of the equal aesthetic rights. You know the article involving the art of the book as a read. Alongside with the process of nail biting. And I collect a certain amount of nail. It's the reading process of that book. I do collect in this. As uh, so I was collecting, then now I realized the idea of the equality and the mode which Groys implied could likewise be applied to the phenomenology of the internal consciousness of nail biting. So it's saying that. As we are considering nail biting uh, with the image of perversion you know, formed by psycho psychology and psychoanalysis, it formed kind of a rack, a rack of perverted rack of the infancy period. The infancy period. So I become that. You know, because of this kind of objective, for still, you know, a priority of the condition involved. So consider the act of nail bite mainly through the idea of ethical, you know, ethics and you know, social approach, other than through subject approach of consciousness. And not knowledge. So therefore, as we approach it through so not knowledge, the form of equality is formed. 
Why? Because the complex of all consciousness cannot be neglected. And it's a line, all together, not all together, but juxtaposed, alongside with each other to be analyzed with. We cannot say all oh, the consciousness of the vital. It's neglected because of its social perverted nation. You know, formed by psychology and psychoanalysis, those two objective signs. It's also proved the orientation of knowledge as a subjective science to be formed. So therefore this logic of uh, image equality is formed. Like how avant-garde artists in the last century could be formed, could form the could call for the equality of the aesthetic image between all. To merge art and life through such approach. All image ready made mass media, video, photography could be aligned with high art, high art could be recognized in, as such they share aesthetic equality to have manifestation likewise those political groups who have different social cause you know, could be free to manifest themselves in a social engagement, a social environment, without being dominated culturally or politically dominated by other states. You know, otherwise, it's an approach of terrorism. I have to say. So, therefore, all aesthetic, all visual images, all aesthetic perceptual images, is aesthetically aligned all together with each other as an equality to be shared with its own purity as art, other than formed with inequality because of the outer political force of the life. And all the all the controls of certain images, you know, compared to our images. I cannot see that painting. It's hard and the performance might not be. But because of the institutional control, or political control, you know, of the certain political context. You know, Certain political context involved, the like political manifestation, propaganda of certain ideology, rejecting which rejecting is opposite form you know, in existed in art. So without the outer interference. An example of a political one, art become pure, you know, with the sheer aesthetic quality. So the aesthetic quality is the ultimate result of this institutional pity or power, outer force, evolve, which disrupt the idea of art purity. So the same apply to the idea of The idea of uh, the same plan, the idea of consciousness, phenomenology, you know, by suspending those objective signs, involved in the objective science, the psychoanalysis, psychology, the idea of perversion, unconsciousness, repression, and the like. Well then, form uh, by 
by this kind of suspension. We then form the equality as an ultimate, as a natural outcome through that suspension, through the equal recognition of all, all acts as conscious acts, with that complex structure of flux. It's in the end. The full still the logical flow in the tree. You know, by suspending the idea of rendered by traditional psychology, psychoanalysis, we are able to confront with the most internal consciousness of the nail biting without external interference by such. Then after we further burn these elements we have to proceed our discussion on time as we have been discussing the horizontal time composition of the intentional events exemplified by the nail height. We are now considering the vertical. The vertical delay the vertical delineation of the temporality and its impact toward consciousness. So I, I still, we are affirming this. But we have to reiterate what, what is embodied in the vertical temporal lines. So like I mentioned, three elements is constituted within. Past, present, and future. But historically, there are controversies involved. Controversy involved through such. With and different ideas, posted, fusion, past, present in different domination. Yeah. So they are asking, and we are asking now about who prioritized the others. Which one? Future, past, and all. As to the conscious act and its analyzation. So, firstly, Martin Heidegger's, not to mention Martin Heidegger's proposition. Which is future orientated. It's actually quite quite an innovative one because it takes a philosophical structure of being as a whole. So as had to mention about the concept of Anticipatory resoluteness, strongness, care, or the like. It's already signified fusion orientated structure of time, of temporality. Because of being as a whole, you know, it's possible potentiality of being as a whole. And the, the preset. Direction 
resolutiveness of being told that you know, like today we're regardless you know, we are, we are not considering you know, those inauthentic one you know, formed by the idea of day you know, we are not considering this we are considering the authentic one form form is such So that's your authentic being as a whole. Being is toward its slowness. It's toward its death. It's fusion, as always. You know, all together at once. So Heidegger has actually ignored the question of temporal position. From that from by Hansburg because it's still quite nice fashion before. So now considering the null point, you know, how many null points involve the duration of the objects. And when in singular null point, the variety, the fruit within to be embodied. So he is considering this being as whole, that structure. So all things all together as a whole. I cannot deny my existence, my component, my existential component in the past as not part of my being. And likewise my fusion, you know, which seems has been thrown. I got potentiality to be authentically going toward that future of death uh, involved the other authentic recognition. So it seems like we are anticipating our death, anticipating our future. We are anticipating that because that's the resoluteness, that's the being as a whole. Otherwise, being won't be a whole. You know, if the being itself won't. Uh, be, uh, being already carrying the potentiality of death, living, component, you're know, feeling alongside and being with, in the world, being with others, these characters. So, being is as a whole. Therefore, this future orientation of time priority is formed because of this structure. But what is Interesting is as both Hesler and Heidegger is using phenomenology, they got a different resolution. Like I mentioned, Heidegger, Hesler is focusing on temporality, specificity, and a more scientific manner, you know, other than the philosophical idea of being as a whole preset. Because being as a whole is still a matter of you know, transcendent object by itself. You know, the idea of future and potential is hardly mentioned by Hassel because it's not yet experienced. Well, phenomenology for, is, you know, initially is focusing on is the tangible, not really tangible, but the, the, the lived experience and maybe it's memory. The memory of which is even more modified than that is future because at least it has been. It's, it's, it was once there, but today it's modified. It's given this is the past. The Hasbro never would say, oh, there's given this future. What's the given this future? There's no events at all, in, no object of intentionality. So Hasbro will say it's just the idea of fantasy. If we're considering our potential, future, it's just a, you know, it's sheer the mode of like, like the analyzation of fantasy in phenomenology. 
I had to give deny that point. Other de rather de depart from future foundation. You know, by using me as school as a transcendental image, which is you know, unprecedented you know, as to phenomenology. As to phenomenology. For Heidegger phenomenology is more what is appeared. Appeared, truly appeared, without external interruption of which. But I believe this you know, this opposite, this opposition between the past orientation and the future orientation of the temporality as to the study of consciousness become different. You know, form certain balance of paradox, which we will be discussing right our next session. You know, the question of you know, how different orientations might form different impact different impact to the uh, phenomenological style the different priority problem and what will impact the analyzation of consciousness as such you know, because of this knowledge of future domination, past domination, which one might be more validified than the other. It's still waiting on the assurance as to such. So it should be what we should include in this part two session. Next time, so part three. In your part three, we would you know, discuss descendants of temporal orientation. Again, that's a reiteration and also the correction of which. And to further enrich our discussion of now by consciousness. So yeah, so you're afraid to leave now.